So it is August 3rd and I'm going to show you another update of the garden. A lot has changed, um, some good, some bad. <laughs> um, I have not been on top of things so much as we are approaching my due date um, and other obligations. So I have kind of let the garden just go wild and do its thing and harvested as things have come up. Um, and then we're dealing with some other interesting things here homesteading wise that I will show you. So let's dive in and start the tour. So the first thing is that this is what my garden beds look like now. They were beautiful and now the mulch is everywhere. And the reason why this is, is because of our free ranging chickens. So it, they've just pulled it all out of the gardens and it's just a mess. And I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do about it. There's some deer netting that I've heard you can put over it, but I don't know if that's really sustainable long-term and worth it, but I might try that next year. For the time being, <laughs> this is it. It's a mess. <laughs> so here we have Landon's bed with all these gorgeous zinnias. I'm really pleased with how they turned out and how much they've filled out too. I love the colors. And then I've got these icky guys. Get out of here. Um, I think we're in need of some watering. I'm seeing a lot of, even though we've had a lot of rain lately, um, I think it needs some good time, like some good watering um, affection. So we've got this little guy here and this little guy down here. Um, and I need to go through and pull some of the weeds out around him, which as you can see, as you very well noticed how <laughs> crazy um, and neglected the garden has been with the weeds. And I just haven't worried about it um, as the plants have gotten older um, and they're kind of rising up and out of the way and they don't need so much attention. They're not competing. Um, and then this guy over here died on me. This was another Kajari. Um, and so I don't know what his deal was, but he's not here anymore. So we wish him well and send him off on a funeral. So we'll see if I get any Kajaris. Um, and then over here, harvested the garlic, which I will show you in a little bit and then also harvested one row of the potatoes, which I will also show you in a little bit. Um, I ended up planting an extra row of potatoes here, the darker green ones, and then also another row um, on the end. So the two darker green are the newer ones. Um, I decided to leave this middle row here. Um, it was part of the first batch along with these ones. Um, and I just decided to leave it to see if I could get the potatoes a little bit bigger. Um, the other thing that was interesting is that these found their way into my harvest while I was harvesting potatoes and I had no clue where they came from. And I just noticed that there are some here on the potato plant. So I am curious to find out more about what those are. Over here, moving along. We have our onions and these are the ones that I planted from seed and sowed indoors since February and they're getting bigger. They're starting to push toward the top a little bit more, um, but I don't think they're anywhere near ready for harvest as I did see one popping up that was very small, but um, so I'm going to leave those longer. And then these guys were planted from actual onion starts. Um, so we've already got some plant greenery on here, which I did not have for the longest time with these guys being seeds. So um, we'll see how 
how both of those turn out. I'm curious to compare and contrast them. And then over here we have okra. So it looks like there might be some little bebes starting there and over there. And then I planted some more carrot seeds over here. They were not the pelleted kind, they were just seeds. Um, I'm curious to see how well the seeds versus the pelleted seeds do. And then also the different planting ground medium, um, since this is not a raised bed, to see how well they do as a result of that. The first round of carrots did great, the pelleted ones in the raised bed, so. And over here we do have the, cu the cucumbers. And like I mentioned earlier, they just started doing this. I just noticed it today. So I'll see if a good watering doesn't help and make it turn around, then I'm gonna have to look into what's causing it. Um, see if there's some sort of disease going on or bug or something. I don't think that there are any pickling cucumbers right here that need harvesting. I didn't see any. There haven't been any big ones just lots of baby ones. Um, I've already harvested all the big ones, but we've got little babies like that everywhere. And, um, oh, where did I? I'm trying to remember where I've seen them. There's one right there. And then there's a bunch of little babies around here. Let's look at that guy. And then there's another one. And then we have our peppers, which they haven't gotten much bigger than that. So I've pulled a few off so it could have energy for the others that are on there that are growing. But we've had a bit of a cooler cooler temps and I think that that might be part of the reason and then also that's being blocked by these marigolds so it's not getting the amount of sun it needs I'm thinking I also think that's why these two are taking these two pepper plants are taking a while to get going and then we have three jalapeno plants here which are getting their first blossoms so we might see some fruit on those soon this is a sweet banana hybrid pepper plant and i've only gotten three peppers off of it but i do see another bloom coming so we might get some more yet and then we have i don't remember what they're called Ooh. they're sun sugar yellow cherry hybrid tomato but the picture is super misleading, as you can see. Because those aren't yellow, but these are yellow. <laughs> and Jonathan was going off of the picture, so he was super bummed when he got yellow <laughs> cherry and not red. Um, but these are actually amazing. I am not a tomato fan, and I have tried them, and I'm able to just pop them in my mouth, and they're great. And this is also kind of hurting a little bit because it, uh, it did not want to fully, it needed to be pruned and that just quite honestly never happened. So it's just kind of doing its own thing right now and I'm letting it, but we have a few that are ready for harvest, but they're really good. Um, they have less of that standard tomato-y taste um, and they're kind of sweet, so. Um, and then, to express my excitement, these are ground cherries, and there are some that are there. I want to try these so badly. I'm like so excited. So, those guys, they're producing fruit, which is great news. But I think. So that is, that's the extent of the vegetable garden. Oh, no. <laughs> you must see the mess of, this is a mess. I'm just letting it do its own thing. And I really need to harvest the kale to make kale chips and to 
you know, freeze some of it and stuff, but haven't gotten around to it. <laughs> and we've been pulling lettuce off here and there. Um, but this guy is kind of just heading the bolt and I'm letting it. So <laughs> yeah, this is, this is the lovely, lovely little bed there. So I love the way the water darkens the mulch in the fence and gives it that extra contrast. I've got the sprinkler going in the background, so you'll hear that. But this is the crazy, the crazy chaos <laughs> of the marigolds that have just overwhelmed this garden. Um, <laughs> they, they haven't even like officially bloomed yet. Like, what is going on? They're coming there, they're getting there, they're, there's a bunch of, they're getting ready to, but no official bloom yet, man. <laughs> it's like, what is going on? <laughs> um, but in a second, oh, I'm getting wet. <laughs> so peeking in, <laughs> I don't even know what we have down here anymore, to be honest. Yeah. Ooh, that was wet. I just got wet by the sprinkler. Um, let's try to find cucumbers are overrunning us too. Ugh. Um, yeah, I don't even know what's in here anymore. Like, honestly, this has pretty much been overtaken by the marigolds. Forget the herbs. Um, I don't know where my signs are. Where are they? I don't know. Here's a pot of something. <laughs> oh. I forgot that sprinkler hit this bed as much as it did. Um, I think I have time in that pot down there. And then... Oh, waiting for the rain. Ah. Okay. Um, and then what do we have down here? And this. That I think is oregano. So it looks like the oregano and the thyme have done well for being shaded. Um. And then we've got the basil, which there's some basil bolting down there, but this basil's looking beautiful still. Um, this is parsley, and the parsley has also done better with the cooler temps and the shade. And then the mint, there's like still a couple little, little nuggets down there, but not not enough to do anything like it hasn't done anything this year so like there's like that little guy there there's one down here hiding like right there but they aren't very big and then we've got the chives and a bunch of grass that decided to seed itself with it the dill has also gone to seed or bolted but i'm still pulling some of it off um, we're hopefully pickling cucumbers soon. The cilantro has also went and flowered. So I would plant at least those two probably later in the season as opposed to earlier for what I've experienced. And then we've got the pumpkins over here. Oh, hey Edgar, what's up Edgar? You wanna be picked up? Hold on, hold on dude. Ugh. Edgar will bite at my feet until I pick him up. Here are the pumpkins. We've got blossoms on them, but I'm not seeing any fruit yet. So, hopefully in time. 
Say hello, Edgar. Hello, Edgar. You say hello. Are you a good ducky? Let's go look at the corn. Your favorite thing to do. Not really. I just will pick him up and carry him around the yard with me as I go look at stuff. He enjoys, he enjoys his little yard walks. So let's look at this corn. So it's getting taller. You can hear Rosella, she doesn't like the fact that she's separated from Edgar. But we've got some corn. I'd say about one, about one on each stalk. There's some baby ones down there, but I'm excited. I hope they get bigger, bigger, bigger. Hi, Edgar. Run to your girly. Go run to her. So this is our garlic harvest. We've got some pretty decent sized bulbs. And then we've got some itty bitty ones. So these are curing. They'll cure for about another week in here. But yeah, there are some very tiny ones. And again, I think it has a lot to do with the weather fluctuation with the temperatures and stuff. Look at that little itty bitty guy. <laughs> so. So this is our potato harvest. And as you can see, we've got some pretty decent sized ones, but there are just a bunch of little ones too. And so these are curing right now in our root cellar. And this is all from that one row. So another quick note is that we are two chickens short. And that is because we had two frizzles that were bantams that were unsexed that ended up being roosters. And we couldn't deal with them being as loud and having the attitudes that they have. So we had our very first experience butchering and it was extremely emotional um, for me and I would say for Jonathan as well. Um, but we did it, we made it through. Um, they are no longer with us. It is very emotional having to kill something that you've raised, that you've spent the time, that you've invested, that you've gotten to know on a more emotional level, regardless of whether you name it, regardless of whether or not it's a pet, any time that you're investing that energy and time into raising something, there's an emotional bond there. Um, and it's just, you have to recognize that and give it its fair share and its due. Um, it's a process and a journey and it's an emotional one. Um, it's one that needed to happen, but that doesn't make it any more pleasant. Um, so I did just wanna share that as well. So here's another one of the chickens. This is where they like to dust bathe when they <laughs> free range. They just decided to tear up my hostas, pull all the mulch out all over the ground and dust bathe in the dirt. So <laughs> my garden's not looking so pretty anymore, but at least they have a dust bath. Hey girl, what's up? What you doing? Hey, what you doing? Pretty girl? You a pretty girl? Yeah? You a pretty girl? You one of my bard rock babies? Hello, baby. Hello, baby. You 
gonna rest for a little bit. Sounds good to me. Check out these big boys. Isn't that crazy how big they've gotten? And how messy and muddy their pen is. It's crazy to me. But there are some hefties. They are some hefties. What you doing, guys? What you doing? That is about as much of an update as I have for you. Um, we are letting the birds free range, and while well, that's lovely, they have started to lay eggs, and there are some downsides to it for sure, being in a backyard home. Um, when you have nice gardens and you want things to look nice, they like to pull out all the mulch in the gardens and apparently eat your well-invested um, time echinaceas <laughs> that you've been working so hard on. Um, but it is what it is. The pigs are getting huge. The garden is wild and um, disheveled and probably needs more attention than I've given it but it has produced and that is great. Um, and we've got harvests, so that's more than I can say and ask for. Um, and I'm looking forward to experimenting with preservation a little bit more and hopefully next year, um, all the lessons that I have taken from this year's season, I can implement and we can get an even better return next year. So thanks for going on this journey with me and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.